Sports. Here we go with the main event of the evening. It's the Super 6 World Boxing Classic. It's 12 rounds of action scheduled for the WBC Super Middleweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Herning, Denmark, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the colors of the Danish flag, white trunks with red trim. Fighting out of Copenhagen, Denmark, he weighed in at 75.8 kilos, or 167 pounds. With a record of 42 wins, two losses. He has 32 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight in his 11th straight world title appearance, here is the two-time world champion, boxing's popular pride of Denmark, known as the Viking Warrior, introducing Defending world champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks and hailing from Nottingham, England. He weighed in at 75.9 kilos or 167 and one quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 26 wins, no losses, 20 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making the third defense of his title, here is the undefeated. Mikkel Kessler in desperate need of a win, looking for his first points of the tournament, and at the same time, the WBC world title. And then there's Carl Frotch with the win. Frotch punches a ticket into the Super 6 semifinals and becomes the points leader, but more importantly to Frotch, retains his belt. Round one, scheduled for 12, MCH center, the WBC Super Middleweight World title on the line in the Super 6 World Boxing Classic. Carl Frotch made the point to us that it's very important for him to get off to a good start in this fight. He's got to, he says he's got to get Kessler's respect and get on the scoreboard, if you will, early. What is the Montoya effect at he, Jimmy Montoya is a great motivator uh, and throughout the fight that may have some impact on Kessler and he feels he is simply going to get out of Kessler. He said, I'm not going to change his style. I'm going to get out of him what's already in him, but he has not shown in recent fights. And Antonio Kessler's camp saying that in his fight against Andre Ward, there was no plan B, but now there's a plan A, B, C, and maybe even D. Yes, and you can see the difference in opponents. I mean, Andre Durrell was everywhere, giving him head movement, giving him feints, and those are the things that confuse Kessler. Right here, they're toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He's the one that's been the aggressor, and uh, he's pressing Frotch back. He don't have to look for Frotch. He's going to be right there. This is going to be a great fight tonight, gentlemen. That's right. Andre Ward giving Kessler all kinds of problems with his speed and quickness. You know, and Frotch has landed some very good right hands already as Kessler presses forward. Remember, Kessler's by nature a counterpuncher, and Frotch told us he thought he could box a little bit against Kessler. In some respects, he's doing that early in this fight. Frotch with that left hand all the way down. 
below his waist. Very confident in his defensive skills as well. He told us that because of his unorthodox style of fighting, he isn't the classic European fighter. And that's going to be a huge advantage for him tonight against Kessler. He's moving more right now, Frotch is. And it's Kessler coming forward. Both men desperate to establish their jab early, and both have tried to do it. Yeah, we see Kessler throw a couple double jabs. I think that double jab will be his ticket tonight. Crotch wants to get out to a fast pace. He wants to take Kessler's confidence away. He knows that psychologically, Kessler, if he gets in trouble, will start to think about the fight against Andre Ward in Oakland, California. Only two losses in this former champion's entire career, and Frotch right now starting to pick him apart. This is a good first round for both men in some ways. Ten seconds remaining in the first, scheduled for 12 for the WBC. Super middleweight world title. Carl Frotch in black, Mikkel Kessler in white. There's the right hand now, landing flush to Frotch's body. And that body attack is going to do well for Kessler as long as this fight lasts. I think what a pr uh, give Kessler a good chance tonight. He's got to have a great case of amnesia. He has to forget <laughs> about that Andre Ward fight. <laughs> this is a new day, new beginning, and a championship title is on the line. Kessler. 42 and 2, 32 knockouts, pinning Frotch in the corner. Now Carl Frotch fighting out of it. We've seen more jabs from Mikkel Kessel already in this fight than I think we saw in most of the fight against Andre Ward. Both men have the intent to establish that, and Kessler's done well in this round. Carl Frotch defending his title for the third time. He defended it brilliantly against Jermaine Taylor on the road in Connecticut then defeated Andre Durrell split decision in Nottingham England some feel that Durrell won that fight yeah it was real close it could have went either way but you know like you said he was at home in Nottingham and he pulled it out he held on to his championship this fight is a, has an interesting dynamic here in these first two rounds. It's Frotch constantly moving and going backward, and Kessler attacking, and both men are landing significant punches. Yes, the jab serving both fighters well. But what it looks, what it seems like to me with Kessler is that he's been very aggressive right now. He's putting the pressure on Frotch. Now some redness on the bridge of the nose of Carl Frotch. Frotch very quirky in terms of how he approaches his fighting. His hands are down. He punches from different angles. He can go backwards and forwards. Very proud of the development of his style based on being a European fighter. He fights more like the Americans. Yes, he does uh, in a lot of ways. But when I look at Frotch, I see no thrills, no frills. I mean, the guy seems to be as basic as they come, but he's just a winner. Kessler suffered the worst defeat of his career with that 11th round technical decision loss to former U.S. Olympic gold medalist Andre Ward, which cost him the, the WBA super middleweight belt. Stylistically, you thought this matchup would end up being an intriguing one, and so far it shows some evidence of that. Both men able to land, both men able using very similar weapons, and they're kind of mere images of each other right now. Kessler with very tight defense. He's been the stalker from the very beginning. Frotch fighting, backing up. Now Kessler go, trying to go to the body. What's the body work doing for Mikkel Kessler? Well, he's investing right now. He's putting money in the bank because he's... That was a great straight right hand to the body. Very powerful shot. The body shots weaken your legs. It takes your... Zaps you of your strength and your energy. So that's why if the fight goes late, he'll be able to have Carl Frotch immobilized, basically. 
you know, Kessler's a fighter who's had injuries to his back, to his elbow, to his hands, and there was the, the worry that maybe he was a fighter that was get, growing old and injuries were starting to take their toll on him. He's shown a lot of zeal early in this fight, and, and physically he's got a lot of pep in this fight, and that's what he wanted to show. Aside from his loss to Andre Ward, his only other loss in his career coming to the great Joe Calzaghe. Yeah, certainly no shame there, that's for sure. One of the best super middleweights of all time. Come on, come on. Let's go. In round two, as here in round three, Kessler's been more active than Frotch, and that's possibly what might be winning him the, uh, this round like the last one. Yeah, but it seems as if Frotch getting a little closer. He landed yep. a, a good right hand earlier uh, in the round. But Al, you mentioned uh, with Kessler maybe getting old. A year and a half ago, maybe two years, Mikael Kessler had one of the best one-two yeah. combination punches that you want to see. Now it seems like he's pushing that right yeah, hand. He's not zipping it right off the, right off the, uh, right behind the right hand. That's a, that's a really good point. 26 seconds remaining in the third round, scheduled for 12 from the MCH Center in Herning, Denmark. Site of the WBC Super Middleweight World Title between Carl Frotch and Mikkel Kessler in the Super Six World Boxing Classic. Kessler in white, Frotch in black. Kessler, by virtue of his first round loss on the road to Andre Ward, is pointless. Carl Frotch beating Andre Durrell, split decision, has an opportunity with the win here to become the points leader and also advance to the semifinals. If he wins, he will advance. Point to remember is that Carl Frotch is a notoriously slow starter in fights, and we saw it against Jermaine Taylor. We even saw it, we've seen it in other fights, so as we head into these middle rounds, we would expect him to pick up the pace a bit even more. Frotch telling us that he will win and defend his title by any means necessary. Therefore, we've seen sometimes he doesn't have the skill level. Oh, beautiful right hand by Frotch, right on the button of Kessler. But sometimes, in terms of the speed, he doesn't have it, but his heart and determination and fortitude, incredible. And sometimes that's all it takes, you know, when sometimes when a, a more skillful, naturally gifted athlete fights a guy that has the guts like Carl Frotch, sometimes that athleticism goes out the window because his heart is just bigger. Now Carl Frotch starting to gain confidence. His punch is starting to find Kessler here in the fourth round. An active fourth round. Both men landed good shots, but Frotch landed a big uppercut a moment ago. It's a great punch for him. We have not, we didn't see it in the Durrell fight at all. That Mikael Kessler jab is still working, and it's very effective. And it's a lost art. I don't know why I don't even do it myself. They can counter over top of that jab, either one of their jabs, with the right hand. It's a risky move, but it does pay dividends. Crotch coming in wild. He may have caught a right hand, a looping right hand by Kessler. Now Kessler establishing his jab as well. But Frotch just so relaxed. Not pressed about anything from Kessler. Kessler made the point that everybody makes when they see Carl Frotch that his hand speed is not impressive. Frotch very, very sensitive to that. But I wonder now that they're in the ring if Kessler feels a little differently. Well, he's definitely able to reach him. And what I, I would hate to watch tape of a guy like Frotch because you think this guy can't beat me. But when you get in the ring, it's a total different thing. He's so elusive in a really unorthodox way. Frotch now looking more and more as his career progresses, even at 32 years old, although he doesn't have the quickest hands, but a very sharp and accurate puncher. Yeah, and a moment ago, we saw some signs of good defense by him. Kessler threw a good series of combinations, and Frotch was able to slip them. Kessler's being very aggressive in this round, and there's the hook, but he just can't land something dramatic. And like in the Andre Ward fight, Kessler having a hard time getting that extra six inches closer to Carl Frock. And you know what? 
his trainer Montoya needs to tell him it's time for him to make adjustments. He's been doing this for the first four or five rounds. It was working somewhat in the beginning, but if he wants to win this fight and dominate his fashion, he got to do something different. Now he backs Frotch up to the ropes, and Frotch will tie him up. To some degree, that something different is the combination punching, which he is trying now, but he just hasn't been able to land them as effectively as he would like. Round six, scheduled for 12 here at the MCH Center in Herning, Denmark. This for the WBC Super Middleweight World title. The champion is in the black trunks. Carl Frotch, the challenger and former WBA champ, Mikkel Kessler is in the white. Good solid jab by Kessler. Fifteen seconds to go here in the sixth round. A lot on the line for both of these gentlemen. And we've seen both men land really, really good right hands, and neither has been dramatically hurt by the punch, although maybe Kessler was stunned a few rounds ago. No, I, th I thought he took those right hands well, and right before this, Kessler came over top of Frotch's jab hand with his right hand, and I think that punch will work for and there, him. And there's another one by Kessler a moment ago. Frotch using the jab like a whip just to keep Kessler on the outside. Kessler has been trying to figure out how to get inside that jab. Going to the body for most of this fight with jabs and right hands. Mikkel Kessler and every now and then, like that time, landing a short left hook. You know, this has been a good beginning first half of the seventh round for Mikkel Kessler. At a time when he needed, I think, something to boost his confidence a bit. And he's had it here in this minute and a half. And Frotch really slowing his offensive pace now. And he better be careful about that because he talked about not wanting to let this go to the scorecards. Yeah, and with these the rounds being so close, you never know. I mean, and, and let's not forget, he's in Denmark. And in this round, perfect example, Kessler being very effective with those good jabs and everything else. Carl Frotch, as you mentioned, Al, has been a fighter that prides himself on being able to come back late in fights. That's when he'll catch a second win, and that's when you'll quite often see his best. Blunt now on the face of Mikkel Kessler on his trunks as well. Kessler cut during the Andre Ward fight, so he has been prone to cuts and bleeding. I didn't see any uh, a significant blow that would have caused a cut, so we'll have to stay tuned and see how the referee scores it. And one of the interesting things, and this is what makes this tournament and this fight <laughs> dramatic, is we know Carl Frotz is capable of last-minute heroics. We saw it against Jermaine Taylor. So that's what sets this up, I think, as a very interesting scenario, even with Kessler doing so well here. Frotz with a cut on the bridge of the nose, blinking his eyes almost as if he's still trying to clear his head after that Kessler short right hand in the eighth round. And of course, that Jermaine Taylor fight, not a part of our tournament. It happened just before it, but it demonstrates what Frotch is capable of. And I'm going to go on record and say that I'm pretty sure that his nose right now is broken. It looks like it's shattered almost, and, he's, and that might cause that the bridge of his nose to swell up where it might cause a problem with him breathing if this fight goes further. Now, in this round, Frotch has gotten his jab out of mothballs, and he's tried the uppercut a few more times, which is a very good punch for him, but doesn't land all the time. And there, you see Frotch being more aggressive. A lot of slapping, though, by Carl. Frotch not really turning his punches over like he did earlier in the fight. And there's the slow hands, yeah. as you mentioned. Yeah, that, that was the right hand that Kessler can counterpunch at any given time. Kessler very sharp. Defense still tight. The body attack, the body attack has worked for him this evening, Al. 
Yeah, Kessler has, has gone very well downstairs, and that may be part of what slowed Frotch down in this fight. See that winging right hand? That's not normally uh, the type of punch that you see coming from Kessler. I don't know where that's coming from. He needs to get back sharp like he was a year and a half ago. He's a slightly different fighter. You're absolutely right about that. Not quite as precise. Nickel Kessler taking more chances, showing that he wants to continue. There's that There's right the hand. hand. There it is. Excuse me, Gus. That's a right hand that a counter punch from Kessler that when he comes in, when he squares himself up, Frotch, Kessler can land. And it's real sneaky because Frotch seemed to have his head down. And he can't see that punch. Left uppercut landing for Kessler. Now a left hook landing for Fry. Double left hook landing for Fry. Kessler has been the aggressor from the very beginning. Fry fighting off his back foot, but that's his style as well. We haven't seen Fry, who has shown an ability to fight going forward, do that in this one against Michael Kessler. It's a lot of blood on Mikel Kessler's face right now. Don't know exactly where it's coming from. I think one of those cuts may have reopened from the Andre Ward fight. Looks like this cut is above the left eye of Kessler. Big right hand a moment ago by Carl Frotch. Now they're starting to exchange some good right hands, both men. Again, a close round here in this round. Frotch. Looks like he's now starting to find his rhythm again. As we told you, he is very good in the late rounds. Oh, there's a sneaky left hand by Carl Frost. And that was a slick move that he just did because uh, Kessler thought he was out of range and Frost came back with a straight, with a straight left at that time. Under a minute to go in the 10th round. Scheduled for 12. Carl Frotch and Mikkel Kessler. Carl Frotch still blinking his eyes. And Carl Frotch is 4-0 in 12-round fights. And Kessler is 2-1. And, and then there was the Jermaine Taylor fight where he won it in the 12th round fight. Kessler's reaching right now and is giving uh, Carl Frotch some opportunities. Carl looked like he picked up the pace here. He's letting his hand go, and this is the type of gut and will that we talked about earlier that makes him a unique champion. The question coming into this fight, which version of Kessler would show up? Could he rebound from that psychological pasting he took from Andre Ward? against a very determined and confident and undefeated champion in Carl Frotch. Kessler, Kessler's doing something great right now. He's putting more than two punches together. He just threw a three-punch combination in succession. Close fight to call so far. And this is the kind of razor-thin fight that Probably Frotch didn't want to have on foreign soil. But that's what he has. And both these men looking to close the show and try and get this decision. I see a lot of little subtle intangibles that I now can see that makes Frotch such a, a, a hard, really a hard puzzle to solve. I mean, he has the movement, great counter punch, just landed a big right hand. And Kessler looks a little wobbly. Kessler. Lands a left hook of his own now. Kessler busy hands, misses with most of those punches as Frotch steps off. Both men, it's a firefight now. They're both leaving themselves wide open. That that really favors Frotch, in my opinion, at this moment. Oh, oh big, right big right hand followed by a left hook by Kessler. And that backed up Frotch. Both back, men both guys, yeah, exhausted. Back. Well, we haven't had a war yet in this tournament. We're getting one now. Yes, we are. Wow. Now Frotch coming back, punching through Kessler's guard. You know, coming into this fight, Gus, I, I wanted to see, could Kessler really have the mental strength 
and the intestinal fortitude to go through a tough fight. My hat's off to him. He's fighting his butt off tonight. 30 seconds to go in the 11th round. Scheduled for 12. Carl Frotch in black. Mikkel Kessler in the white trunks. This for the WBC Super Middleweight title of the world. In the hometown or the home country of Mikkel Kessler. Burning Denmark. The Super 6 World Boxing Classic, folks, just got hot. All the drama and all the things that have happened in this tournament, what we were also waiting for was a war. That's what we got here tonight. Went right down to the wire, and this will be a tough one to call. And we have the decision. Let's go inside the ring, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Roger Tillman scores the bout 117 to 111. Judge Guido Cavalletti scores the bout 115 to 113. Judge Daniel Vanderveel sees the bout 116 to 112. All three in favor of the winner and the new WBC Super Middleweight Champion of the World, the Viking Warrior, Mike Kessler. The home fighter holds serve once again in the Super Six. Mikkel Kessler, a unanimous decision over Carl Frotch as he takes the WBC Super Middleweight belt, giving Frotch the first loss of his career, and in a few moments we'll have an interview with Steve Farhood. He'll talk to both fighters in the ring. 